In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today we celebrate a saint who, as you can probably guess, is quite dear to my own heart. This is the first called apostle, the um, Saint Andrew. He's patron of, I've, I've lost count of how many countries, but, uh, but at least two that I could tell you about. And we heard a lot about his life today. We heard about that in the Synaxarian reading. And it would not be beneficial for me to simply revise what the Synaxarian has already said. And so I'll revisit something that I think is very significant. Things that we know about the Apostle Andrew through what isn't written. In the Gospels, we have very few mentions of St. Andrew. We have very few mentions of him after the Gospels either, in, in, whether in Acts or in the Epistles. Very, very few. Um, the Acts is mostly about Peter and Paul, the preeminent of the Apostles, whereas the other Apostles mostly aren't mentioned. But in the Gospels, there's a few times that they are. One of those times, one of those times we talked about in today's Gospel reading. And in today's Gospel reading, it was the first time that Andrew had heard about this teacher. He was a teacher walking past a long way away. At the time, he was a follower of St. John the Baptist. He and his brother. And he was pointed out to him. This is the Lamb of God. This was a, a term that had great significance. This is the Lamb of God. And Peter and Andrew took that as their signal. We're going. We're going to follow him. Elsewhere, we see Andrew, and this is likely beforehand, so St. John's words were acting as confirmation. We saw Jesus speaking directly to Peter and Andrew, or rather to Andrew, who then found his brother. Now, this, this wasn't just a brother in the sense of being genetically related. This was a co-worker. This was undoubtedly a close friend, as well as being uh, biologically related. So, who was the first person that he thought of when, say, when, when he found out, here's the Messiah? He went and got his brother. And this is, these are the words that are typically listed on icons with St. Andrew, where, where there's a scroll or something along those lines. We have found the Messiah. You have to understand, this is something that they've been waiting for for thousands of years. There was no expectation in any one lifetime that this would happen now, although there was great hope, there was great anticipation. There was even the common thought at the time of the first century that it would be very soon. And yet, it had been thousands of years. But now, now he was the Messiah. And what's recorded in the Gospel is that he went to get the one closest to him. Tell him as well. Even though his brother would go on to be the first of the Apostles. Not the one who, he, who Jesus spoke to first, but his brother. Lesser men may have taken this as a slight. But there's no evidence of this for Andrew. Clearly he was happy enough with this. Not, only, not the first, not even in the, in the innermost group. He was happy with what he had, knowing that the Messiah was here and that he was following the Messiah. There's one other time in scripture where Andrew's actions are mentioned. Not just as a group, but him in particular. There were some non-Jews who wished to speak to Jesus. And these were, this would be seen in the same way as saying those foreigners wanted to see Jesus. Those people wanted to see him. Well, yes, they did. And so they spoke to, um, they spoke to Philip and Andrew. These were undoubtedly people who were closer. Perhaps they understood Greek better. And so 
it was them that these these people spoke to as a halfway point and then they spoke to Jesus this became a signal that the Gentiles were ready that people like us were ready and it was Andrew who was in part instrumental in making that happen making that connection what we see in the example of the Apostle Andrew is that he, d- he makes those connections. He forms that go-between, that bridge between one and the other. Between his brother and the Messiah. Between those people and the God who loves them. In honouring this saint... That of course we would honour him in the way that we honour any saint by thinking well of him but we honour him much more when we emulate him when we are like him so let us emulate what we see in the scriptures in being the go between between the outside of and the God who loves them and wants them to come home. In being the go-between between our loved ones and the Messiah. To be the one who makes the introduction. Maybe it goes no further than that. If there were introductions that didn't go anywhere, it's unlikely that they would have found their way into the Gospels after all. But we, our job is partly there. Part of our job is to make those introductions. <clears throat> and then what happens after that is to God. Our job, make the introductions. Be that go-between. Be that person going between worlds, so to speak. Going between subcultures. And wherever you are, bring Christ there. And if people, if people wish, bring those people back. Bring those people to Christ. May we all do this through his prayers. Amen.